right next tissue, char charitinized and charitinized. It's squamous, epithelial tissue, mouthful. Uh, let's look at it right here. So this is actually from our collection, and um, the example we're going to talk about is skin. Skin. Function, I said earlier, waterproofing. of the keratin, it adds a uh, waterproofing. Another way to think of it, <clears throat> prevent dehydration of the, of the skin. <clears throat> of course, you can help by adding lotion. But that, that's a picture of stratum corneum, which we're calling keratin in this uh, chapter. In chapter 5, when we actually talk about skin and look at skin under the microscope, we call it stratum corneum, cornified, which means it looks like horned. So you see all these like you know, horns. And, but anyways, remember, the cells at the bottom, those are the living cells. And as you get pushed to the top, right around here, Stratum lucidum, the cells die. You just have dead cells at that top layer, which are uh, continuously shed. There's a word for that. When the apical cells are shed, it's called um, desquamation. All right, let's move on. That is skin or <coughs> keratinizing, stratified squamous epithelial tissue. That, that is how you name it in chapter four. You can't call it skin, even though that is where it's from. There's another picture there, and I took a closer up picture so you can kind of see the transition from living cells to dead cells. These dark cells here is kind of where uh, cells are still living, and they start to die at this clear layer, and the dead cells on top of that. But anyways, we call it keratin. It's, it's like a specialization of this epithelium. Well, um, transitional epithelium is next, and we looked at it before, and when I drew it on the board, um, what I drew and forgot to note, it was pointed out, uh, you know, the bidecleated cell. See you know how domey they are at the top? Because this tissue has the ability to stretch. Transitional epithelium. Organ, urinary bladder. You also may see it in ureter, which is another part of the um, urinary tract. The ureter, that, it's a tube, it goes from the kidney to the bladder, transporting the urine. Part of the urinary tract, the tube from kidney all the way to the bladder. <coughs> it's dispensable. This, this tissue can stretch. A stretch function so it can hold a capacity of urine. Your kidneys produce about one mil urine per minute. You'll start to feel your bladder being full at about uh, 200 ml. Anyways, that's what the tissue holding that urine looks like. Um, what's definitely stratified is definitely, as these cells at the top, they look kind of domey. And just imagine just stretching this thing out, okay, if the bladder were full. Stretches readily. They have a nice picture of kidney. That's ureter. 
has bladder down there. So this is the lining of that too. Transitional epithelium. I'll note it here. Look for that binucleated apical cell. It's definitely a stratified epithelia. Don't call it that, call it transitional. That's the proper name. Now here's a picture from our collection. I don't see the binucleated apical cell, but it's definitely from top to bottom. I got some uh, dust artifact there. I'm looking at the black dot. But all these cells from top to bottom, that's what transitional epithelium looks like. Okay. Um, more functional aspects. Uh, I did mention earlier that epithelial tissues can be glandular. So moving away from the different types of epithelium to its function as a gland. I did not define those terms though. Exocrine, endocrine. Epithelia is glandular, and glandular function can either be endocrine versus exocrine. Endocrine glands, they secrete hormones into the blood. That, that's pretty much what you'll see. So the secretion is into the bloodstream. And what you'll talk about in 431 are the glands that are secreting the hormones into the bloodstream. Secrete hormones into bloodstream. So endocrine glands are ductless. They don't need a duct going to the surface because they just need access to a capillary bed. They don't need a duct. They're ductless. Exocrine glands, they'll secrete onto a surface or within an organ, into an organ or onto a surface like skin or into your stomach. Secretions um, are secreted, kind of redundant, secreted onto a surface or into an organ. So stomach and skin are good examples. Into the stomach, into the lumen of the stomach, fall into the skin. Yeah. Maybe you're secreting acid into the stomach, or maybe you're secreting <clears throat> a sweat gland is secreting sweat onto the skin. So the secretions could be sweat, enzymes, like for digestion in your stomach, tears. This is all glandular tissue, and they're all made out of epithelial tissue. So to get the secretion into the stomach or onto the skin it requires a duct. <clears throat> Here's a picture of that. The epithelium on top in development um, is just overlying connective tissue, but glands are a downgrowth in their development. And if the cells have an exocrine function, uh, some of the epithelial cells will, will remain simply to act as a duct. The cells down here have the secretory function. They're making the enzymes or sweat or saliva or mucus or whatever it is. Here, if it's an endocrine function, secreting hormones into the bloodstream directly, um, you don't need the duct. Okay. 
Oh, I already talked about this. Uh, epithelial tissue is unicellular or multicellular. There, there's a pretty picture of one goblet cell. If you have multicellular glands, um, they like to categorize these different types, and I'm not going to hold you responsible for this, so just breathe a sigh of relief. I always look at these, and since my first year of teaching, I'm like, uh, I don't even want to know these terms. And, in, and these terms would be useful if I thought it was useful when you looked at real slides, but I have never seen those kinds of things on real slides. This is about as complex as I've seen. I have been staring at slides for over 15, 20 years now. Uh, this is about as good as it gets. Multicellular, ooh, many cells. <clears throat> One cell, unicellular, the goblet cells. That's all you gotta know. As an example of unicellular, an example of a multicellular one, okay? What I mentioned prior. The other good function for epithelial tissue is that their glands are, they're also membranes, okay? And uh, I'll get into that, but when you have secretions, how you secrete, they categorize it. And this figure shows merocrine versus holocrine type secretion. So I guess we should do through that type of secretion. It's good to know. So I'll leave, I'll leave the glandular, but I'll just change my colors. <coughs> holocrine, merocrine, seen here is the merocrine cells, the secretion is, well the mechanism is exocytosis. There's, there's all these vesicles fusing with the apical surface and then being excreted, or secreted by exocytosis. So it's like if I were to draw just one cell. One cuboidal cell, the nucleus in there. And the, the thing it's packaging is in these little vesicles. The secretion of my little blue dots, maybe it's mucus or something. Those vesicles fuse with the apical side. secretions are let loose on the apical side. By this mechanism, by exocytosis, you're not destroying the cell. The cell remains intact and can continue this exocytosis. However, in holocrine secretion, it's stratified. And the secretion is you just completely burst the top layer. And by those cells lysing, you're secreting the substance, the desired substance, by design. And then the cells underneath it are undergoing mitosis and they'll replace the top layers. Whole cream, whole cell is busting open. I'll just kind of write that. Apical layer of cells. Bursts. We call it lice. <laughs> Lysis, lysis bursts, means the same thing, it just bursts open and that's how the secretion gets secreted. All right, well, another thing I mentioned is um, you have membranes. Membranes do some secreting too. Membranes can be uh, wet or dry. So epithelial tissue are membranes. And this is nothing new. What I've noticed over the years is these books, they like to call things different things. But it's all the same thing, that's what I've come to realize. Epithelial form membranes. So remember at the beginning of class at 7.30, I drew this.
It's already in your notes. You don't have to redraw it. But just so you remember, I drew that, right? And what did we call that at the beginning of class? Simple cuboidal epithelia with microvilli. This is a membrane. The definition of a membrane is you have an underlying connective tissue layer called the basement membrane. It's connective tissue. I'm not any teeth that yet, just wait for now. Connective tissue fibers. There's usually no cells in there. That's the base is kind of the foundation. Like your house is on the foundation, the cement slab, right? This is that. An overlying epithelia. That's a membrane. We just didn't call it that at the start of class. So, so membranes equal one plus two. One plus two. The overlying epithelia, the base of the okay. Well, anyway, that's a membrane and they're dry, they're wet. So for example, if it's a dry membrane, we, we re can't refer to them as cutaneous membranes. dry it means it's not secreting mucus. It's dry, like skin. <clears throat> That's the only one you gotta know. The cutaneous membrane of skin. The more we looked at it before, it's a cutaneous membrane, but if I were to ask you to identify tissue, you would probably say keratinizing, stratified, squamous, epithelial tissue. It happens to be cutaneous membrane that is dry. You have mucous membranes. They are wet. mucous membranes. That, well, they basically show the respiratory tract and the digestive tract. We looked at the uh, trachea earlier. That's a good example. We, we call it a ciliated, pseudostratified, columnar epithelial tissue with goblet cells. It's also a mucous membrane because you got goblet cells that secrete mucus and the mucus glands um, in the layer below. Okay. But here's our epithelium and here's our basement membrane. So this thing is a membrane. <clears throat> All right, serous membranes. Um, yeah, it's a good one. They're also wet. Examples of where you find them are the peritoneum, the pleura, and the pericardium. Uh, the three P's of anatomy. I think I called that before. Well, you kind of see it there. Um, they're the linings of things. They're the linings of your, of your pleura and of your heart. And it, it inside the body cavity, okay. And so the insides of these things are wet, not dry, okay. And if you look at um, the membrane, well, let me show you the picture, then I'll draw it on the board.
This is an overhead view, and it's a simple squamous epithelium, but you're looking at it from overhead. And so do you see how the individual cells are kind of cobbled together? And they say that this tissue has a cobblestone appearance. Okay, but you're looking at one flat layer of cells, and it's not dry, it's wet. It secretes a serous transduit <clears throat> that makes things slick and wet to the touch. <clears throat> so all your organs' linings are slick with fluid. Oh, uh, yeah, that is one function. And it also is for nourishment, too. Uh, I even heard uh, that in some uh, surgeries, where they have to remove part of the cranium for a head injury, they'll take the cranium and they'll even store it in the peritoneum because it's all the fluids in there will keep it sterile and won't rot. <laughs> and then they kind of put it back in the head. All right, so anyways, what I said was this serous secretion, sometimes they call it a transduit. The cells are flat. But they're not dry. They're wet. So if I don't put the basement membrane under here. <clears throat> So it's a simple squamous epithelial tissue. It happens to be a serous membrane. There are different names um, that it goes by. You can call it a serous membrane. You can um, call it a mesothelium, if you ever see that term. Um, Remember, they align the heart, the lungs, pericardium. Um, there's a condition called mesothelioma, which is a cancer of this tissue. Okay? And if it's of the lung, that I've spoken to doctors, they kind of remove the whole lung um, to get rid of the cancer. So mesothelium is one term. Another term you'll see, endothelium. This is a simple squamous epithelium, but it lines the insides of your blood vessels. So here's a blood vessel in cross section. The lumen, the hole in the middle, when you cut a blood vessel, that's where the blood flows, but it's lined with CT. I just want to give that to you as a side note because um, I'm going to put a line under here. Endothelium doesn't go with membranes, it's just taut as part of the vessel wall. But that term comes up, and it sounds a lot like these other terms we're talking about. I just wanted to avoid confusion. But you do need to know that mesothelium is an example of a serous membrane. Endothelium is not. It just sounds like a word that I just mentioned. All right, so. For histology practice, I don't teach from these slides anymore, and I always want to delete them. But I've left them there, just so if you want to practice identifying them, you can. But what I customarily do, since we got this uh, new scope camera, is I take the slides I want you to look at for the lab, and I just look at them. So you can see them up there. So that's what I'll do. So what I'll do is um, kind of shift gears in the lab, even though it's still be presenting.
I want to look at these seven. And hopefully you'll have some live time today to start looking at it. So typically what I do where I'm going with this is um, I like to <coughs> find these slides that I present in lecture and show them to you as part of the lab time. And because I can take pictures of them, I will. And I'll even make them available um, on Canvas so you can kind of study them. And uh, I usually use them as the basis for a quiz or maybe even your practical. <coughs> that, that's a fair expectation. Is, um, I'll, I'll record me going over this so you can kind of see. Because the thing is, the slides aren't labeled. And uh, I'm not going to label them for you, but I will go through them right now. <coughs> so give me a few minutes to get them together. I want to find where they are in our new boxes over there. If you want to take a two-minute stretch break, go ahead.